I, what are you going to eat if you go to Orange County Fair Speedway? Uh, I'll definitely have the popcorn. Pulled pork? And the pulled pork sandwich is really good. But actually, they are, they also have a London broil sandwich there. Oh, look oh they that do really, now. I saw somebody sitting next to me had one, and it really looked good. I almost asked Jessica if I could have bite? it. Wow. I almost did, but I really didn't know the hey, guy. Hey, mind so if I have here. a bite? Well, I'm gonna, you will after that. <laughs> I'm going to let uh, Jim do the honors here. Would you like to introduce it? And we should have a drum roll for him. Yeah, we should. Yeah, we're, we're honored. Yeah. Yes. All right. Tell us about it. We are honored to have with us this morning on the phone, Danny Creedon. Danny, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, that's great. Uh, this, I'm curious. You have a nickname. You know, a lot of the drivers have nicknames. I assume uh, Timmy Pitts is the one that gave you this nickname. But your nickname is the DC Express. Are you from Washington D.C. or how did that nickname mm-hmm. come about? No, uh, actually, that came from Steve Pados up at Accord Speedway. Um, I really have no idea how that came about. <laughs> but that's been oh, it's probably been five or six years now. So that's what they, uh, Steve Pados gave me that nickname, and it just kind of stuck. Hey, Danny, did you ever ask him why he did that? No. no I, I no, love men. Just, you uh, know, men don't yeah. care. A woman nah, would call know us that. whatever you want. It doesn't matter. A, a woman know? would find out in two seconds. But know? it's a great nickname, <laughs> yeah. don't you think? Yeah, it's cool. It's kind of catchy, you know. Um, I, I never really had a nickname, so it just kind of it just stayed and stuck and that's what our lettering guy puts on the front of the race car. And I love it. It's on all of our T-shirts. So I'm going to call that's him. It. I'm going to call you Dan the Man. That's what I. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> nickname too. Now you all mentioned right. that well, you, you, Dan, you mentioned that you run at Accord as well as the Orange County Fair Speedway. Two completely different tracks. You know, you got the uh, the little quarter mile or at Accord with a heavy bank in, and then you got the five eighths mile at Orange County Fair Speedway with tremendous straightaway speeds. How different are they? And and do you have to prepare the car differently and not, and driving them differently? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Accord is like you said, tight quarter mile racetrack. Um, we do different stuff there. We have uh, sail panels, what we call in the back quarter panels, um, American racer tires up there. Uh, mostly everybody has big small box, big cubic inch small box. Um, Orange County, we have no sail panels, Hoosier tires. Um, you got a, a 358 small block, and we run big block modifieds there. Um, basically, because of the speeds of the place, we do different stuff for suspension wise and gearing and. Um, just overall, just because of the speed and the corner speed, we just do different stuff on shocks. So it's different going from big tracks to small tracks, but besides that court in Middletown, we race all over Northeast. We run the short track super series. And, uh, last Sunday we were up at a place called Thunder Mountain in Center Isle, New York. Um, that was a quarter mile, but it's, it's more rounder than Accord. So there's different gear ratio, different shock changes, different tire compounds. So every racetrack that we race is, is totally different at times. Speaking of Thunder Mountain, I, I read a story about you recently that you actually won a race with a flat right rear tire. Is that true? And can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, that that race there, that race haunted me for two years. Um, it was called the Lightning on the Mountain, which actually which was the race um, that we ran Sunday. Two years ago, sorry, three years ago, we were leading it, had a flat right rear tire with about 10 to go. Um, I believe... Chad Cook won that race. The following year we go back, I get another flat right rear tire about 30, 35 laps into the 50-lap race. Anthony Perego ends up winning that race. Last year it got rained out on Memorial Day. We ended up going back in the middle of September and finally got to win that race um, three years in a row leading it. But at lap 35, 40-ish, I felt the tire going down. And it, it, luckily the race went green. Uh, the rest of the way. If it, if we had the yellow, we'd have been in big trouble. <laughs> but it went green, went across the scales, and victory lane, right rear tire was flat, that right is, on the wheel. That so is, that, 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 so that race awesome. haunted me. Yeah, that race haunted me for years with flat right rear tires. I have no idea why, but it just always did. So, what a what a great story. How did you um you know when did you start racing and how did you you know decide that you wanted to do this? You know you wanted to race cars. I mean, was it something in your youth? Did your parents take you to races? Uh, how did that all kind of begin for you? Uh, my father raced back in the early early seventies to about eighty four. I was born in nineteen eighty three. Um, after that, my father continued to go to the races. Um, we were all over the Northeast chasing races with Butch Tittle and Dom Roselli, Joe Romer, um, all over the place. We went everywhere. Um, my father did his darndest to keep me out of a go-kart early. He wanted me to see other sports. We played Little League and whatnot. 
Um, I used to play the first three innings of little league games so I can go go kart racing. So <laughs> it back was in, in your blood. yeah, it was. I'd see, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Back in 1992 at Middletown in the arena that we used to run the indoor races, the Thunderdome, Timmy Heinley yep. and Chris Foster. We were there watching. My dad was there. My dad used to be partners with Chris Foster's father, Connie Foster, when he had race cars. So I was up in the grandstands. We're watching. They're racing. Timmy Hundley comes out. And he goes, where's your dad? I said, dad's up in the grandstands. He goes, go get him. So I go, dad, dad, Timmy wants to talk to you. Come on. And you can see my father's face. He knew it. He's like, oh, boy, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy comes down. He goes, uh, bring a helmet next week. We got a go-kart for you to race. And right then and there, that was it. I, I can remember playing his day. That's great. I had Chris Foster's helmet. I had one of Timmy Heinley's coats, and that's that's where it started. How old so I were you? That was How old were you? About nine, about nine years old. Oh, I that love that. That is it. so awesome. <laughs> that's yep. great. And pretty much from there, there out. That's just uh, this is what we do seven days a week, twenty four seven. Yeah, it's in your sit. you know you know it's in your blood or it's not. I mean, there's no Absolutely. there's no middle there when it comes to racing. You mentioned you mentioned some old timers or old time racers there. Uh, Saturday night at the Orange County Fair Speedway. Fortunate enough to have people surrounding me as i race um that helped me out big time joe romer's at the shop two to three nights a week um charlie castle he's at the shop two or three times a week um his wife chrissy watches our daughter sadie oh, I love when it. she has no school so uh you know i had fortune i worked here at five enterprises with don roselli for a long time um timmy i talk to timmy Hunley just about every day if not every day every other day um it's it's definitely cool to see like Buzzy Room and come back. And uh, I got to see Stevie Botcher the other night walking through wow. the pits. I didn't physically talk to him, but I got to see him quick. And then we got canceled there because um, the rain was coming. So it it's definitely awesome to see the people I watched growing up and the stuff. Even people that I didn't see race, um, it, it's just to know who they are. And, uh, you know, we're respectful as racers now. I'm very respectful for uh, all the older veterans that started this deal. Sure. Yeah, and, it's, uh, a, it's definitely a, cool to see everybody. Yeah, it's definitely a family business. And when we say family, it's extended family, too, because the people you're involved with, that sport is like a band of brothers is in the military. You know, people, Absolutely. yeah, they come together and they want to help each other. I mean, we had that with Jerry Higby, the conversation that yep. he could be racing, you know, hard against uh uh, one of the drivers, and then if something happens, the driver will get out and help them. Yeah, they they kind of share that. That's really uh, interesting in the pits. Uh, the track service at Orange County Fair Speedway has been a hot topic of conversation around these parts. Um, I understand that they've hired Jeremy Corcoran uh, to work on the Speedway service. Now, he's from out west, I think, in Canadaga. Can you kind of share with us your thoughts on the track service and maybe what's needed there? Um. It, I can give you one thing. It is not from a lack of trying. Sure. Jeff uh, Pagata. And, Je- know, and and Chris Larson is so open to making things better all the time. Exactly. Um, you drive by there on any day during the week. They're out on the racetrack. They're yep. working on it. Um, Jeff Pagata. And then, actually, my boss, Chad, has some equipment down there. Um, you know, Chris Larson. I know Matt Janiak's there working on it. I know Boniface is down there working on it. I know Suitcase is down there working on it. It is not from a lack of effort. They definitely, they're, they're trying their hardest. Um, the good thing with Jeremy is I, I know Jeremy. Um, I, Jeremiah, sorry, I know him. I never raced at Canandaigua, but that place always looks great. Um, they're going to do, I know Chris is going to do everything he can to make that place great again. So it's, it's rough, yes. Um, it's dusty, yes. But like I said, it is not from a lack of trying. They do their darndest down there week in, week out, trying to make that place as great as it could be. You know, Rome was not built in a day, so it takes time. You're on a learning curve all the time when it comes to things like this, and you're at the mercy of the weather. Yeah, the weather, dirt, dirt inconsistent. Dirt ain't like blacktop or concrete. You know, it's dirt. You know how much moisture got into it during the week. They got to leave it sealed up when, you know, we've been getting these rainstorms. Uh You know, even on a job site, it's so tough to work right now because it's so wet. But you get, you can't. It's hard to predict the weather, and they have to leave the racetrack sealed up on a Friday night so the water don't get into it, so it don't get... Um, the easiest way to explain it, and Don Roselli told me this one, is throwing carpet on a hardwood floor. So oh, if you geez. get water on a hard layer underneath, and then there's a soft layer, oh, the, yeah. the clay or the dirt's going to flop up, and it's yeah. going to get rough. Yeah, it's not fun. Um, unfortunately, I think I'm the only driver that likes rough racetracks. <laughs> I think having rough racetracks puts the driving back into the driver's hands. Um, all these race cars are the same. 
all these motors are the same. Everybody has basically the same equipment. So when we're all out there, it's like driving down the highway 65 miles an hour with cruise control on. When you put obstacles in the track, a little bit of roughness, a little bit of slipperiness, a little bit of cushions, whatever, run onto it, it makes it makes the racetrack racy, and the fans come to watch racing. And that's what we do. Yeah. There was a thing on Facebook with Tony Stewart. He said a definition of passing is going out and watching the cars go down the highway. That's passing. <laughs> definition of racing is watching race car drivers come from the back to the front every week. That's a definition. That's a of good racing. analogy, actually. I love that. And that's why I don't understand, even in NASCAR, why people get mad if somebody taps them. You know, like Senior said, rubbing is racing. 100% right. You know, we don't want to destroy nothing by no means because we no, got most of us work not. all week long, you know, 50, 60 hours a week working on and these things. And a lot things, of money and time. A right. A lot of money Absolutely. and time goes into that. Nobody wants to wreck anybody and they don't want to be wrecked. Just want to run right. a good race. And that's uh, basically it. And anybody who's in this sport is doing it for the passion and love of the sport. Sure. It's definitely not. I, I think that's exactly why we do it, because we ain't in it for the money, I can tell you that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we know that, but Chris Lawson's trying to change that. He's brought a lot of big purses there. Absolutely. Chris, Chris is probably one of the best paying, or if not one of, is the best paying weekly racetrack. Um, I raced upstate for a long time, probably four, five, six years I raced upstate um, on a smaller track, a Thunder Mountain or Five Mile Point, and it, they just didn't pay as much. You also didn't have to have humongous money in your motors. Sure. So that's yeah. why we chose to run up state for a while. Luckily, now I stepped into something with my boss, Chad Lodice, and Bill Regan, and Roger Humiston. Um, all them guys put everything together to give us the best that we can have right now at Middletown. So actually, as we stand here on the phone, when I get off the phone with you guys, i got to call our motor builder to see if our new motor is done for this weekend. So, uh, <laughs> now, <laughs> so do you have to put a new call. motor in every week? No, no, no. We just... Um, we're trying to keep up with the Joneses, basically. We, just, we got a chance. Uh, we got another motor with some more horsepower to it and uh, a newer configuration. So hopefully we'll have that in for Saturday, and hopefully we can park right in Victory Lane. Oh, yeah, I hope so, too. Now, are you married with children? Absolutely. They're actually with my wife and my daughter listening right now. Oh, uh, how old's your married. daughter? Baby is five and a half years old. Oh, that's a great oh, age. that's tremendous. Yeah, before she's a teenager, have fun with her. <laughs> so I'm oh, saying. yeah, well, she's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that little girl right there, she's probably been to more racetracks than most humans. Or she, most she may, she may end been, up in a in a car one day. You know that. Well, you ask her. She she one day she says yes, one day she says no. Right now she's into karate, which is great. Oh, good. Um, you know, I want to get her doing something. And yeah. um, she rides important. a little her fool with her around the, around the shop, and she rides the hell out of that thing. <laughs> so, uh, you know what though? You know, you have to have support of family when you're doing racing. There's no other sport to me that's like it. You've got to have no. people around you that support you and, and are there for you when you need them because it is a tough sport. And that's the one Absolutely. thing you do see with race car drivers. They have the most of loyal sports fan base of any sport in the world, and their family is always with them. You see it in NASCAR yeah. on that level, too. When they're out there, you know, saying the prayer or saluting the flag, their wives and children are standing right next to them. And that's Absolutely. My, my wife, Tanya, is the hardest pusher that I have. There's been times we've been we've been struggling lately. We upstate New York last or 2016 we won 14 races. Following year I think we won 11 or 12. Last year we got four. Um, we're on a different league now, racing Middletown. You know, racing with the best of the best and right. on the road with the Dio Series, which is the best of the best. Mm -hmm. You know, you got Matt Shepard and Stuart Friesen and all these guys oh, yeah. and Billy Stewart's Decker that do it for a living. Right. So there's times that I get tired and. Uh, basically just said well i just about had enough and my wife tanya will not let us quit i love her she uh <laughs> yeah yeah so so i'll give you a quick story last week um friday night we weren't that good saturday night saturday we were supposed to go to five mile because middle time was off and we were struggling i was searching and she said what do you need and i said well i need a shock so she's on the phone she calls timmy Heinley. next thing you know she's driving i'm driving she said, where the hell is she going next thing you know she comes back she said here timmy said put this on so she's uh She's definitely. Um, <laughs> you found a winner she's the, there. She's, yeah, she's the pusher of the deal. So she yeah. definitely won't let you know, us quit. My, my my wife always tells me behind every good man there's a better woman. So I think, <laughs> uh, I think I'm hearing that. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah You're this is a, right. this is a smart man. <laughs> yeah. I just want to mention. Well, my, that. my wife is smart as well. <laughs> Well, yeah. Danny, yeah, go ahead. No, I just wanted to ask, Dan, you know, the, this sport was all but, you know, uh, dead. They were ready to throw dirt on it back in the 70s Literally. and the 80s. <laughs> and, and, and now you you look at some of the young drivers I see at the Orange County Fair Speedway. Well, like Chris Larson has a lot to do with that. He brought life back here. 
They were, that place was dead. Yeah, and they're young kids, you know, like Corey Cormier, you know, you mentioned Tyler Boniface. Yeah, uh, we've had him on his sweet kid. Allison Ricky, you know, yeah, a buddy of ours, yeah, Danny Margevitz. Yep. I mean, these, these are like uh, fresh out of high school. Some of them are even in school still. I mean, it, is, is that a, a telling sign for the sport? I hope so. I, you know, um, my boss's son, Charles Lodice, he's 15. He'll yep. be 16 here in a couple weeks. Um, he's still in high school. He races. Tyler Banks is still in school. He races. You know, I think uh, the only the only downfall that I see, and this is just my opinion, every name that we see the kids coming up, they're from a racing family. Oh. There's no outside new names coming in. Mm-hmm. That's you know, Chad raced, and now Charles raced. My father raced. Now I raced. Jerry Higby's dad, Big Hig, was right. always involved in racing, and Jerry is now doing it. Now Cody's yeah, doing Cody, it. Yeah, Cody, um, yeah. You know, so it it's tough. You don't see a lot of new faces. Um, you see the same faces, just different generations. Right, I would say younger faces. They, they <laughs> younger faces, right, and, and that exactly as they start moving up. Um, I think the sport's in decent shape. Um, I just, the, the cost, is getting out of control. Yeah. The, the motor what, cost is getting would, out of control. What would be the answer to that to help out people that want to race every week? Um, How about sponsors? The, the good, well, the sponsors, but there again, all of my sponsors, Bill Regan's been involved in racing for years. Chad's been involved in racing for years. Roger Humiston's been involved for years. Um, it's hard to bring a new sponsor that don't know nothing about yeah. Dirt modified racing yeah. into it. People are fortunate if they can do that, but they know somebody who knows somebody. Right. Um, it's very tough. We had Smoker's Choice one time, and that was very good for us, but they're only in for a year or two. So it, it's tough to bring somebody in uh, from the outside looking in. But I think the sport right now is, is we're in decent shape, and Chris is paying good. Yeah. And uh, that's what keeps everybody coming yeah, back to Chris, uh, Chris is going to make it right. Everybody just has to have a little patience. Well, Danny, we've run out of time, but I want to tell you, we'd love to have you in person one morning. So maybe we Absolutely. can arrange Absolutely. We'd love that. to come down. Yeah, we'd love to do that. So we're definitely going to arrange that. So, listen, good luck this weekend. Yeah, we'll be watching you, Dan. Oh, yeah, we absolutely will. And I can't wait to meet you in person. And uh, continued great success. Love the interview. Well, did a great interview. Thank you very much, guys. You guys have a great day. You be too. Well, Dan. Bye-bye, Danny. Bye-bye. So, Danny uh, Creedon. Creedon. Just a tr- We're hearing all sorts of crazy noises yeah today. i mean he's a really terrific young man boy can he really knows how to do radio yeah. i have to tell you he's genuine he's you know he's going to tell you where where it's at the truth the background i love I it i have a see i have a uh, a big uh, announcement to make oh though. you know for our birthdays jake meyer's birthday is today from oh. the orange county fair speedway oh, so jake if, meyer. if jake is listening jake happy birthday happy birthday I, jake i hope the wife spoils you rotten today yeah you better um, and why don't you go check out the speedway maybe you can steal that popcorn machine for a couple of days <laughs> corn machine for a couple of days corn machine